my office hours. Today we're going to discuss what happens when you shift the demand curve and the supply curve at the same time. Uh, let's consider the following example. Suppose that uh, demand increases and supply also increases at the same time. So we've got two changes taking place. It's a little bit unusual because ordinarily we like to assume ceteris paribus, which means that we freeze everything that's happening in the world around us and we isolate the effect of one variable changing. For instance, just demand or just supply. In this example, we're going to allow both the demand curve and the supply curve to simultaneously increase and we're going to see what we can say about the result in terms of the price and the quantity. Let's begin with demand. So we're told here that demand increases. So that means that the demand curve is going to shift out. But I'm not actually drawing a new demand curve. Because all we know is the demand curve increases. And so what does that mean? That means the demand curve could move anywhere in this direction. It could shift out a small amount or a big amount. We don't know exactly how much, so we just know it shifts out. Second thing we're told, the supply curve increases. Okay, so let's do the same thing with that. Supply curve shifts. But once again, we're not told whether the shift is small or the shift is big. So the supply curve also moves out along the quantity axis. Now what do we have? Well, we've got some overlap here between where the supply curve is going to end up and where the demand curve is going to end up. And so therefore, we know the final result is somewhere in this area right here. Anywhere in this shaded area is going to be the resulting equilibrium between supply and demand. It allows us to say something about what's going to happen to the price and the quantity. Since the resulting equilibrium has to be at some point beyond Q1, all of the new quantity values are in this direction. That should make sense to you, because we know if consumers want more of the good, that is demand increases, and suppliers are willing to produce and, and offer for sale more of the good, it makes perfect sense that the amount produced in the marketplace would rise. What's not clear here is what happens to the price. The price starts at P1, but for instance, if demand were to shift out a lot and supply were only to shift out a small amount, well then we might end up right here and the price would be higher. Of course, it's also possible that the demand shift could be relatively small and the supply shift could be relatively large, in which case the price would be lower. So the price can rise, the price can fall. You can see this right here. This is the original equilibrium price and many of the new equilibriums are above the original equilibrium or price and many of the new equilibriums between demand and supply would be below. So we have uncertainty here with respect to price. Price can go up or down and we have certainty with respect to the quantity axis. This is exactly what happens when we violate Ceteris Paribus. In violating Ceteris Paribus what happens is the more we do it, the more difficult it is to say anything that's truly easy to uh, sort of digest and to lock in on. In this case, we're still certain about the quantity movement, but we're uncertain about the price movement. That's what makes economics an interesting discipline, is that we can allow many things to change at one time. That also is the challenge of economics. It's very hard to be able to lock in exactly what the economy is going to do when many things are set in motion. I hope this has been helpful to you. Have a great day.